So this is clear, right? There is, I mean, after this talk, I know you will all say this is common sense. Right? So I will show you some of the mutability effects, side effects, and how you will feel that you are mutating, you are mutating your code and what is the resolution. So okay. Uh, let me go to this. Yeah. Have you seen this kind of code? Uh, in your program, I mean, this is one of the most common code. You, you, are, you are creating a list and uh, you are just adding two elements into the list, right? What will happen if uh, there are two different traits that are working on this list? What will be the final outcome? Uh, it's, a, it's, a wrong, it's a wrong widget, it will provide you a wrong widget. That's perfect. So we will not end up with a wrong result. We will end up with an uncertainty. Right? So uh, uh, even uh, we have given uh, uh, such kind of code where we uh, end up with a mean press. Okay. So uh, it's it's very horrible that uh, some immutability can even lead to a mean press because it can block the thread. It can and your some of the process is still hogging the memory and it will go out of memory and it can uh, lead to a mean press. So uh, this is the multi-threading issue. Uh, I have not explained in detail because this is one of the most uh, common scenarios. So uh, this for that code, I'm not seeing. So for uh, if this is the code, yes. Did he call it? Right. It, it, it should not get called in the function. That's why I have not written the function because if you call into the function, it will create a instance. Yeah. Right. I, I know that. That was your point. So uh, you should not put this code into a method because uh, then the two threads and if you if you if you have a uh, uh, non synchronization at the method level, it will create the two different elements and there will be no problem with the mutation. So that is the exact point is uh, same. So this will be somewhere uh, outside the method and those two lines will be somewhere inside. Thanks. I'll correct this code much better. Yeah. Uh, second problem is a. Uh, very prevalent problem which is called atomicity breakdown. Uh, you know what is atomicity, right? Atomicity has nothing to do with trading. Well, many people think that it has to do something with trading. Okay. Uh, it, it has been seen uh, very frequently in the code and most of the time it's because of the wrong logic. I'll show you, for example. Okay, and mostly we saw it uh, into the past code where people uh, design it, the new people join and they just pass the code and we see it. But the actual culprit is the beautiful thing. Can you tell me what's wrong in this one? If it is visible, I'll say it is the font. Thank you. Yeah, better now? So, uh, what's wrong in this code? Okay, this is a class called numbers and uh, it uh, just keep adding numbers. So, I have a method called add integer, which logically should add an integer. Uh, integer is plus and minus both, right? So, it should be uh, add positive number, whatever. I have the position uh, for which I have to add the number and if the number is less than 0, I am throwing the exception or else I am adding whatever the number I am passing uh, into the average. So, uh, can anyone tell me what is wrong here? Yeah. Uh, please. So, what will happen to this code? Array is not initialized. Uh, okay. Some different session for that. Yes, so someone was telling something. <laughs> Right. So what happened that a software engineer had joined and uh, he saw that this X is getting used here and uh, someone told him to write only for the positive number. So before this line he just went and added it this. Right? But uh, if X will be negative here, it will throw exception. 
right? But what you have done? You have increased your position before all, right? So if I keep calling this uh, method n number of times, your position will be keep increasing, but you are not actually getting the elements into that, right? So what will happen? Some points. Ah yes, uh, so it's actually uh, a mistake of immutability and out of bound, out of array of yeah, array out of index will come. So do you think it's a programmer mistake and we should fire him? <laughs> no, it's not. Because the state of class is broken internally, right? And uh, okay, uh, do you think the signature of the add integer is right? If you think this into the immutable uh, state of mind, then this add integer should return array again. And that's the only way you can make this immutable. Okay, so every time when you are doing this kind of operation, you should return a new thing. Okay, you should not keep mutating the, uh, the data structure. If you are returning a new thing here, it will be either returned up or it will, it will not be returned. Right? So either you will reskill this code and it will get a uh, proper return from this method or the exception will come and the code will go out. Right? I will show you the example why this is important. Yes, we will see how to uh, deal with this uh, in the inverted. So this uh, question is little bit clear that what is this one? I know we will have one of these. So, so yeah. And the size will increase, and there is a lot of uh, space. Why we need the class? The class uh, need uh, for uh, composition. The class is not. Doesn't it get into the function program? no, that's actually uh, object-oriented programming. What you are doing right now is a function program. Object-oriented programming say its object should be oriented. So whenever you uh, do some changes, you should return an object rather than keep changing the state of the object. Uh, I have a better example where I will show you why we should have composition rather than uh, uh, mutation. Okay. Okay. This is uh, probably the third uh, third issue I am talking. Uh, that's called temporal dependency. From the name, it's very easy. So I understood. So the order of execution becomes very important when you are talking about the mutable degree. Okay? Changing the order can lead to an unexpected result. Okay, again, it's not a wrong result, it's an unexpected result. And I didn't know any of the code is this. Okay, can you can you see this code? This is a very small code. What I'm doing, I'm trying to give a uh, SCP request where uh, again it will not be received, right? But I'll tell you, uh, I am doing the request.set URL where I am passing some google.com Then I am setting the header and then I am setting the method And in the finally I am calling the request.fetch Okay, so request.fetch will actually the fetch, fetch the request So, uh, do you think that I can change the sequence for this code? I think header is Which line you think that we cannot uh, exchange? <laughs> Can I, can I put the fourth line at the first place? No. no? Okay. Uh, can I uh, change in between the first three lines? Yes. No. Because you don't have the idea of the prior implementation. So you cannot actually uh, understand that set header is not, uh, uh, set header don't need anything from set URL. Or you don't have any idea that set method is, uh, is looking for something from set header. Okay, you need to go into the implementation detail and then you have to see and you have to understand that what need to be the sequence for these three lines. Even you cannot change the sequence for these three lines because all the three lines are mutated. Right? It is possible that set method needs something which is actually done in set header. Right? Or set header is doing something which is actually done in set URL. Right? So here, uh, none of the four lines you can change the sequence. Am I? It depends upon uh, the way you have written the code. No, it, it don't depends upon the programming language. I think uh, uh, if the programming language uh, supports you immutability uh, by their design, then uh, you don't have to bother. There are a lot of languages which supports immutability. I think it, it depends on internet implementation of 
how the request class is written. That's true. That's what I am discussing. And uh, you you need to know all the methods what I mean, what I mean implemented. Because if you don't know the implementation of those methods, probably you can mess up. Right? Very good point. Uh, yeah. It is depending or not depending, we don't know. Right? So the probability of dependency is there. Yes. The, 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 the chance of dependency is there. And that is what it is trading the unexpected result. There, there is possible, I mean very good possibility that like set has nothing to do with set URL. <laughs> but we don't know. We actually have to go and see the code for set URL and set URL, right? Yes, but uh, if it is implemented properly, I should be able to call those ah. three methods in any order, right? Writing a set method means you are not implementing properly. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, so uh, it, it needs a lot of conscious effort to implement, and that is what the precise problem of immutability, uh, right? So, uh, and uh, in the in the modern life where people change company in six months, I think. Uh, this four line of code uh, must be written by four different engineers, I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> okay. so, yes, very conscious effort need to be now to make, make a simulation. So, uh, any, any, any problem with this? This is called temporal dependency and uh, maybe some other name on the URL. I just gave something. Fine? Okay. Uh, uh, so, uh, you, you know what is called monster classes? Uh, yes. So, uh, mutability provides the way to create monster classes, and monster classes are huge big classes which is existing in your source code. And uh, the, the, but the good thing is that it's a feature addition, and you can keep adding into the monster class. If you want to do some new set, you just go and add that. Right? And after ages, you need to refactor it, right? Because it will be completely messed. And we have a lot of classes in the JDK source code where we see uh, more than uh, 20 seconds in a week. So we know that there is something wrong in these classes, but we are still carrying it, right? So master classes are the very huge classes where you are writing like 2,000 line of code, 3,000 line of code, and uh, you are just keep appending uh, things for the setters. So, uh, two, three new variables came, okay, then set up, we'll, we'll see what will happen. Right? So, uh, this is the actual code I have taken from uh, Apache email client. Okay. Uh, now they have changed the code, but when uh, Apache email client must have been written by, by some college uh, guys at the starting time. So, what they, did, uh, what they do, they provide some uh, 30, 40 configurations, and you keep setting all the configurations. Okay? So you will do email.set protocol, email.set server, and email.set uh, font, and email.set uh, cc, vcc, everything. Okay. And uh, this code goes for like the uh, 3,000 line of code. So uh, this is a master class. And it's very easy to identify. You just go for your source code, and most of your working classes will be the master classes. Most of your big classes will be the master classes. Because we have are, we are not designed it. Uh, uh, yes, uh, so uh, maybe this, I am talking about the setter monster. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you can create monster class for any number of reasons. Let's go. Right? So, uh, what will happen if you try to write this code in an uh, immutable uh, fashion? What will happen that you need to do all the setting in your constructor and uh, you will feel awkward. Because your constructor will have some 30 parameters, right? So you know that I am doing something wrong. I should not do this like this. Because uh, if there is 30 parameters here and I want to make it uh, immutable, I need to pass those 30 parameters in constructor and I have to set that. Right? In our previous example we have seen. And uh, you will realize when it will go more than 80 characters, right? The ID supports that something is going wrong, right? So uh, master classes is one of the examples uh, to identify that something is going wrong. It's uh, it's not actually uh, anything to do with uh, mutability or immutability, but it's a hint that you are doing something wrong, and that wrong can be a writing a mutable class. 
this is a, uh, this is another monster example. Okay, uh, this is small, not monster, but uh, when you will go, uh, really it will be monster. So what I am doing, I am creating a reader, and I am doing the uh, set file, read all C, uh, CSV format. Okay, and the format should be CSV, and set the column, then convert it to all caps, and then uh, I I am a good programmer, so I, I should always use the cache. So I will say set cache equal to true, and then finally you are saying uh, you are saying read, right? So, uh, do you think this uh, this code is the right way to write? I have a different perspective. Yes, please. So, okay, this is something which is which you think is not a good pattern because it leads to all this uh, side effects, right? Master classes, yes. But, okay, but that's what you're doing in JavaScript, right? You you go and set up some interest things into okay. for, for a array, you know, so CSS or CSS. Yeah, so any kind of JavaScript here? Yeah. What do you think? He, he just in the one line he told that JavaScript is a bad language. <laughs> so, uh, uh, writing an immutable uh, kind of a structure is very tough. Okay, uh, if you want to see the toughness, I can show you. So, yeah, it, it, will, it will come after one. Okay. It's about it's a data between bad programming or or utility and and, and flexibility. It's uh, it's the data between uh, bad programming and uh, good programming, not between bad programming and flexibility. Okay, because uh, uh, these days I'm, I'm seeing people are doing so much of effort that they are creating servers which are immutable. They are creating a lot of cloud components which are immutable. I mean, these they are creating frameworks which are immutable. In a framework, you can think you have to write more than maybe a thousand other classes. And creating all the thousand classes immutable, I mean, this this just need a lot of work to do. Right? Yes, I am talking about the composite design. How uh, this code should be written. I'll, I'll just show you. That's true. That's true. So yes. So what what you should do? You should do trust and compose. You should trust your small small classes, and then you try to do composition. Composition is good, right? I and mean, this we learned in the college time. In the Java, composition is good, but we never use it. Then compose, and that's called composition. And it's going to be easy, and it's going to be a final solution. So you should do a development based approach rather than a maintenance based approach. I know the, the companies are more revenue in maintenance based approach, but still you should go for a development based approach. And this all need a conscious effort. This is what my point because it, it needs a lot of time. It needs a lot of time. And a lot of the programming languages like you told about JavaScript. JavaScript is basically a client language where uh, they're, they're, now it's a server language also, so no offenses. Um, <laughs> So, where the memory are very much limited, and you cannot write a immutable code in a uh, in a specific set of memory, because immutability means always return a new class, always return a new instance, right? So, you are creating a lot of garbage character, right? All the time. This is how the code should be written. Okay. So, what you should do? You should create a new file, and that new file should go into the input stream. That should go to the main stream, that should, should go to a CSV, that should go to the all caps, and then finally you should cast it out. And there is no read. That's it. This is just a read. And in the new programming language, this is all achieved by something called dot dot dot. Uh, if you are a stream uh, or a lambda programmer, I, I think even dot dot provides uh, stream support, right? Yeah. Any dot dot user here? It, it provides stream support. So you, you just have to write dot 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 all caps dot all column dot csv dot line. And this is actually uh, an immutable code. Because when you are constructing your uh, list here, what is that is x, it's in the immutable state. No one can mutate. Any doubt about it? Here you are creating multiple classes. Now the approach could be we can have a better and the builder, you know, what is the process? What is yes, the yes, yes. There are many ways to do it. There are many ways to do it. Okay, and uh, you, you, you really don't have to write this much. Programming language support much better way to write. But uh, just to show you how, uh, because we are creating a class at every uh, step, and you are seeing how it is getting composed, right? 
So this class is getting composed inside this and then this and then this and okay. So uh, uh, sorry, but I don't know anything about patterns. We just get a computer and we put a code. <laughs> this is how they can be written. Okay. And now, uh, under a new effort, we have started uh, making a design document from the code. Yes. I think uh, this is this is what uh, we call network Yes. Okay. Uh, 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 mutable, mutable, uh, immutable classes are there. So uh, one of the performance gain you will have there. If you are talking about the memory performance, uh, uh, mutable classes are very good because here you are always creating a new class, right? And you are using lot of memory, and you are actually garbage collecting also lot of. Memory. So your GC will run and you have to see the GC time also, which will again come as a uh, problem. Okay, but uh, we have a lot of better ways to do this. Okay. okay, so uh, one good paradigm is that we should not write a static method. Yeah, I just heard that. Right. Yes, exactly, exactly. So trust on all small classes and I am uh, about to finish. Uh, compose them. This is last. So uh, it's a question for you, guess what? I will uh, increase the font. I know it will take some time to guess that's why. I am doing some okay, this is too much. It needs to go like this, yeah. There is some more minus number here. So what I have written a method called sum and uh, sum is a very nice method which take all the integer and empty value and it will give you a result which is not required at all from the mathematical background uh, because you can just have a pretty progress in that. And then uh, after some time someone might write a method called sum absolute. Okay. And you know what is dry, right? Anyone know what is dry? Not repeat. That's it. So uh, I have written a sum and it will be uh, an offense if I not use the sum, right? So what I did, I uh, made uh, uh, math dot absolute and then I uh, called the sum method, which sounds a very logical thing. Okay. And then I passed some uh, number into the array list and I called uh, both sum absolute and sum. So what will be the result? Is anything wrong here? Or I am just stopping you for the lunch? Can modify the list itself in the end. Okay, all everyone got the answer the same thing. Yeah. Data is getting changed in second call. Where? Uh, <coughs> when we call some some absolute, then my data is getting changed. So when we get a number will become positive. And then when it will be called second time the sum, yes. then uh, I think it should be the same result. So what will be the output of this? This is minus five, minus three, minus two. And what is the second output? There are two SOPs. Both should give. Both should give. Both should give. That's it. Good one. See, we don't have a proper reason, but it's going to be Yes, so uh, what we uh, what you told is absolutely correct. What you are doing here, actually, uh, you are changing the list. Right? And this is a very obvious way to write, but this is not an obvious way for the programmers to understand it. You are just taking the element and you are setting the value. Again, you can see the word by set. That's why I hate setters. Okay. So why you are changing? You are changing your list and eventually you are using the same list here, right? So it got changed and that's why you will get 10 and 10 more. Right? Any doubt about it? 
Uh, any other questions I can add that down. If you have any concerns, you can drop in. Yeah, this you can go to three slides back. Yeah, just before that. This one. Uh, so I had another example where you said this one. No, the one before the, the bad is that bad word. This yeah. So there are a lot of parameters that you are you're trying to do as like yes. number of columns. Yes, of yes. Gap. And you said one of the problems is you will pass all of them to the constructor. So you just put the getter only approach. Right? In the latter example, how do you pass up the parameter? Uh, you have to pass the parameter so that the value of the class will transform from one state to another state. Okay. So when I pass it uh, with the with the with the uh, int three, it will give me a new class, and when it will pass with int six, it will create a new class. So you will still have to pass all those parameters to the cached list when you're initializing. I have to pass all the parameters, and I have to uh, transform the value. Yes. So I should not mutate the value. Okay. In the initial state, what we are doing? Uh, the three I will change the class. In six, I will change the same class. But in the in the non-mutable state, you should return two different classes. Uh, I have one more question. Yes, please. Uh, we were Your questions are related to this one. We were having two types before, right? Uh, C programming, when we started. So right. Structure type and the type. So yes. For all setters, I mean, it's actually different. You can create a structs and uh, use it out to get rid of this mutable uh, thing. Ah, yes. yes. You, you can create all the sex and the... Whatever yes, yes, you are, you are telling the correct. Uh, you, are, you are telling that uh, at the starting I will create an instance of the class which will not change after. Right? Structured. Type. Yes, structured. Yes. So, uh, it is a problem because we are using a reference. It is a problem because we are using a reference. We are using a reference. That's all. So, we will use structure. Yes, uh, that's actually not a structure, that is quite constant type of uh, programming. And that is what we do actually in the strings and all, right? We, we do a functional kind of programming, uh, which is more uh, ancient than structure. I am referring value type, reference type, uh, structure was the one data type. Yes. Uh, over there we can define, you know. Right, but you will have methods, right? How you will change the values for the stuff? How you can create so many structs? Because somehow you have to generate it on the fly, right? But the struct is a, uh, the, the, how you will change the struct objects, the, the data of them. So, you, you understood the problem. I, I think uh, we are on the same track. So, you are telling that we can do this by creating a struct, right? Yeah. That's, that's true. Please. So, actually, yeah. Immutability is not good in some scenario and bad in some scenario. So, I would totally great if you can conclude then in this scenario we should go Yes, uh, and that's, a, that's a exactly good question and uh, I will just give you uh, Android SDK uh, the best practices is that you should be mutable. <coughs> Why? Because Android knows that my SDK runs on such kind of hardware where there is a very uh, high resource, uh, uh, very high constant of the memory. Right? So where you have a very big memory constraint, it's good to go with a careful mutable code. The careful word is very important. Okay, so just don't uh, do the right click and say, just set, set, set and data. That's what we do, right? We write class and we write 10, 15 data and then right click, set up data, construct everything in one code. So uh, where you have memory crunch, you should always get, go with the mutable, uh, mutable way of writing the code. But you need to be careful. I have a similar example scenario where we are handling the data. So if we are handling more set of data, supposing k is or mb of 5 for example, my file reader, or here is the example of external reader. Yes. Right? Here we cannot go with the because the cost of handling data is too, too high. That's true. That is what I told you in the mobile case also. Right. The cost of handling data will be too high. Right. So the same, yeah, the same thing happens with your desktop programming also. In the client side, yes. When you are handling this data. That's true. So uh, this kind of programming is good for the server side programming language. I mean, that is the conclusion point. You have already concluded. So on the client or the, I, I will not say client or the mobile, where, the, where there is a memory constraint, uh, you should go with a careful, mutable kind of programming, where uh, the memory is not a constraint. You should uh, do a little painful job and you should write the immutable classes. You know, I am talking about the classes. Suppose I have written my own XLS 
XML part set. Okay. I I don't know the size of XML. It can be in MBs also. Yes. So it it should essentially be mutable. If it is immutable, then we might. Ah. Uh, so uh, that's the uh, reason most of the programming languages provide you both the ways, like even the Java do. So you have a mutable collection and you have immutable collection because uh, it it leaves on the user to decide that which one should use. So if you are using the Java in a smart part, it will tell you to use the mutable version. And if you are using the Java on the server side, it will tell you to use a mutable version. So if your if your uh, XML parser is unknown, that where it is, it, it's going to be run. You need to write the two set of XML parser. One will be the mutable version of XML parser, and one will be immutable version. Of XML. Can another example where uh, you will not, uh, you should not probably do uh, mutable. When the object actually abstracts, uh, you know, some sort of unmanaged or Operating system handles and stuff like that, exactly. where you cannot, uh, where it's expensive to create and destroy. Right? When I say unmanaged, it's outside the realm of the garbage collector uh, management. So, say for example, a file handle or uh, an operating system handle that yes. is expensive to create, like for example, a TCP connection or a socket or whatever. Resource right? management. Yes. And the resource management is so that's you, you cannot. Uh, in that case, you'll have to probably, uh, uh, you know, ha you know, have uh, you cannot generally use the. You have to manage the state within one class and uh, you probably have a bit of abstraction on it. Right. XML reader and parser is also a kind of an example of that sort. So the parser is sort of a difficult, it will have a, you know, the, 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 the tree, the parser tree or, you know, the, the tokens will be expensive to create. So it's, 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 uh, it's better to kind of have that managed by one, one class and the state is for uh, management. So, um, I hope you are starting for that. And we should not take the question. Actually, so I am immutable now. I will not take it. <laughs>